In today's video I'll be showing you how to paint a still life object in water-based oils. The oil paints I'll be using are Aqua Duo and Lucas's Berlin. The Aqua Duo are my favourites because they're a lot thicker but they are much more expensive but I do find that the Berlin ones are quite high in pigment and are adequate. I'll be using three paintbrushes. One is the Rigger, that one. This one is a small graduate flat and this one is a Pro Art Bright. So to begin with, I've done a background colour of uh, turquoise um, just because I thought that um, there's some turquoise in there and I thought it might be quite nice to work on turquoise. The colours I've got here in my palette are titanium white, viridian green, this is vermilion, cadmium red deep, um, I think that's cadmium yellow light and cadmium yellow deep. This is olive green. This is actually an artisan colour, which is Windsor and Newton. I'm not that fond of them because the colours are quite weak, but it's the only dark colour I had in my palette, a dark green. Uh, this is cobalt blue, yellow ochre and ultramarine. The object that I chose to do today is my old reflective egg cup. I put it on the uh, apron and I particularly like the way the colours curve up the sides of the shape of the egg cup so that's why I chose it. So first of all I'm going to start by drawing it out. I'm going to take a dark colour, there's a lot of dark colours within it. I'm going to take my dark green, Oop, stay there, ultramarine and I'm adding quite a bit of water to it to make it reasonably runny. That. I'm not too worried about what colour it turns out because it will be covered anyway. So to get the shape, I'm going to draw a line down the middle to get the symmetry. Like that. And go both sides. Making sure I've got equal distance from the middle. So looking at my shadows, I will squint at my object and I will just do a very thin layer of colour. I'm mixing it with water at the moment and it's a similar principle to using ordinary oil paints in that you work from thin to fat. But when working the initial layers, it's a similar principle to ordinary oil paints. You just work very thin. I've added water and uh, later on I'll be adding the linseed or making it fatter as I go. This is also dark there. And that is. So I think I'm ready to start the actual painting. I'm going to start by painting the background. And then I'll be painting the object on top of the background. So I'll be doing the blue and the stripes of the pattern of the fabric. And at the same time as painting the fabric, I will be putting the shapes of colour into the object as well. The object is actually darker on this side than the fabric and lighter on this side than the fabric. So I have to keep a note of that, otherwise I will lose my object into the background, which is quite good to do in some places, but um, not all. So for the background, I'm going to mix a dark blue and I'll put some cadmium red deep into ultramarine, add a bit of water to it. And slightly tone it down with a little bit of green. I'm 
think I need a bit more on that. And then I want a paler blue, so I use ultramarine again, add a little bit of white to it. And then I think I want to dull it down a little bit, so I'll put a bit of red in. And maybe a spot of yellow ochre. And that dulls it down. And then I want the palest colour. So with what's on my palette knife, I will just mix that in a little bit too light. So I'll take a bit more ultramarine. Um, no, I don't want white. And a bit of cadmium red. A bit more blue. More red and a little tiny amount of green to dull it down a bit. So that will do. So I'm going to work quite thickly. I'm going to put on my darkest colour and I'm just pushing my brush through and getting a nice roll on the end of my brush so that I can put it on quite thickly. And take a little bit of dark colour over here, put that in. And a bit more here. And that dark colour being behind the knob on the top of the, um, the object will make it stand out. Because it's cream, it'll get a bit darker in there. So that's the first layer for that. I'm going to look at the colours now in the fabric. So I'm just going to mix those up. So starting off with lightest, that yellow is very similar to the yellow that I can see. I'm going to add a little bit of white to it to make it more solid. It's a little bit loud. So if I hold it against my object, actually that's quite close, so I'm happy with that. There are shadows within the yellow, so I'll take more of this yellow and add a little bit of red and blue. That's probably too much, that takes it way too dark. The yellow is so weak, it doesn't take much to... Um, change it into a completely different colour and some white there, that's a better colour that's a little bit darker then I'm going to mix this lime green so this is why I like Viridian take a bit of water because it makes fantastically bright greens with the right yellow so this yellow is very weak and I need some white, more yellow, I'll move that bit of dark green over there. And I think I need some more yellow. 
Now we have more yellow. I'm going to put in quite a lot. I think actually I've made that dirty by putting my palette knife into the um, dark green. I'm going to add some titanium white to this colour down here. A bit more yellow. more green that's getting there but it needs a little bit more of the viridian I think that will do and then I'm going to add a bit more viridian to the area down here just to make a bit of a darker green so I need to mix the yellow sorry the orange make sure my palette nice clean I'm going to take my vermilion and my light yellow and again the yellow is very weak it's a billing color so if it was an aqua duo it would be a lot stronger so I'm going to put that there and take a little tiny amount of this red and mix my orange so the orange is slightly more red, that will do, and then I want a lighter one and I'm using up an awful lot of my yellow. A little bit of titanium white just to make it more solid. And I'm happy with that. We also have a pink and a purple, but I will start on my bright colours and then work my way around. So taking my bright, making sure it's clean, using my lighter yellow, I'm going quite thick again. The yellow comes around here and I'm stroking it on very lightly so that it sits on top and doesn't... Um, I'm not pressing too hard because if I press too hard, the blue will come through. A little bit of it is, which I quite like. So the light changes here. So I'm going a little bit darker. Maybe I'll add a little bit of orange into that to darken it again. And there's a little bit of a shadow around here which is actually quite dark, I'll put that in and there's another little bit of yellow there which is a light yellow so I'll take that and while I'm at it I'm going to put in the line that I can see of yellow within the object which curves around and down like that so moving on to my green it's the paler green so I'm going to put that on and what I will do is I will neat knot the yellow using the green and my flat brush it comes round here and then it goes into shadow so I'm going to take some of this darker green and put that in like that and just neaten up alongside the yellow then there's the darker green above it but first of all before I do that I'm going to just see where I can see other little spots of green so there's one that goes around the base just over here um, and also within the object there that's very bright but actually I quite like that it does go darker against the background though this side so I'm going to have to put in the shadow green which is around there and then I'm going to put in the darkest green which is up here And also there's a dark green which is the edge of the patterned fabric. That stops around here. 
and you've got a little bit of a brighter bit along the edge which is the seam so I'm just touching my flat on there like that and I think that paler green is a little bit wider up here so I'm just going to put that on there and there's a funny shape that goes on here it sort of goes off into here so I'll put that in and there's a bit of a darker yellow within here so I'll block that shape in that's maybe a little bit too loud I'm going to take some of that orange into the yellow and that goes down there like that I don't need to be too worried about the pattern just so long as it looks like um, the fabric that I'm doing it doesn't have to be exact and I think this yellow goes right up to the base there of the object I'm going to have a little bit of a darker green down here So moving on to my orange, oh, actually while I've still got green on my brush I'm going to put in a bit of green over here as well where I can see the um, fabric reflected and then there's a pale green circle in the middle here. So onto my orange, I'm going with my lightest orange first, very often I work dark to light but I seem to be working light to dark on this, so I've got, oh actually well I've started working dark to light so there you go, so the dark orange is down here, it's quite dark actually, that probably is too dark because my red won't show up next to it so I'm going to put a little bit of this pale yellow into it. and go over that colour and then it goes lighter a bit more yellow into that so my orange here is too yellow so I might redden it up a little bit and put a spot of white in to slightly lighten it ah oh, that's a bit better and take that in. It's picked up a bit of the colour of the drawing underneath so I might go over that at some point and within the object itself within the reflection there's the orange that drops down there like that and then I'm going to move on to the red so the darker area of the red is quite cadmium. I picked up a little bit of this cobalt blue colour which actually I quite like so I'm going to put that down here and then it goes lighter although actually there is a little bit of a dark hint around there and there and then I'm going to add a spot of white to this not enough to make it pink but just to lighten it a little bit and maybe put some of the vermilion in warm it up a little bit so I can see already that my orange is not quite right and a little bit of blending as I go like that so in my object the red comes around down there like that and there is also this red coming around here this brush is quite big but it will stop me from being too fussy This actually there's a red that comes up here as well within the object and the red goes down there like that. 
What I might do now is I might use a blue to get the shape of the object a little bit better. Like that. So within this area here there is a bit of yellow as well which I didn't put in so I will put that in using the corner of my brush like that and then I can see there's a bit of an orange colour there. This is also orange back here, so I'm going to use my orange that I've already mixed, slightly more red though, and just cover this area. And this is where I will start to the drawing, so I will draw the shape of the egg cosy. like that I think that orange should be a bit lighter up here and there is an element of that orange that comes around here so again thinking about my drawing Going to get the shape a little bit better. I can also see some red in there. So I'll put that in. Onto my pink, and it's I think a sort of a pink using the cadmium red deep. Yep. And a little bit of blue. It's slightly purple in feel in the shadow so there's my shadow and then on top is the pale pink and within the object I can also put the pink going down like that and then we have a purple which I'll just use the cobalt blue into the cadmium red deep pink and block in that and then add a little bit of white a bit more into there. Now I'm not going to attempt to finish all this because I want to concentrate on my object. So now what I'm going to do is start to look at the lighter areas and the top of the egg cosy is very very pale and I can see the window and I can see my easel and I can see me in the middle and on the other side is a tapestry that's hanging on the wall. So I can see all the elements of the room. I'm going to start on the top of this and really try and get the shape of it. So squinting at it, I've got two greys going on. I've got a pale one and slightly darker. So I'm going to put in um, a little bit of cadmium red deep into yellow ochre and titanium white and then add some blue. And that is quite close to the darker grey as I want. And then I'm just going to put some white into it to get the lighter colour. A little bit more yellow ochre. And I think that will do it. So this is where I start to really form the shape. Going round edge my, my paint is a little bit too thick so I'm going to add a bit of water so 
So I'm going over my blue background. Made a bit of a mistake there, so I might get some of the blue and redraw that. And that drops down to there. I might move on to a small brush so I can have a bit more control. Now I'm picking up some of the blue into this colour and I actually like that, although it's not there. I can see a little bit of a shadow under here, so I'm just using a bit of the colour I've got on the palette to put in some shadow. There's this darker grey that is the ceiling in the middle here. Now I'm going to have to put another layer on top of this, but I will let it dry for a little bit first. This palest colour also runs down along here and drops into this area here like that and this comes down to meet it almost. And again, on the other side, I'm trying to keep my symmetry, so I'm just going to try and draw a line. And I'm pressing quite hard now to force the paint out of the side of the brush, so it gives me a good line. So I'm ignoring all the details and I'm just blocking in the major shapes. It's kicking out far too much over the other side. However, there is red fabric there. So I'm going to just paint in the red fabric to redraw it. Actually, there's a little bit of yellow. Depends how far over to the side I move. So I'm going to take some of my darker yellow and just redraw just here. So that's all too wet. So I will leave that and put in some yellow along here. I can also see quite a few little shapes of colour within here so I'm just going to suggest those a bit of yellow and also a little bit of the green I've not put turquoise in yet but I'll do that in a bit and the red colour goes up here a little bit I'm going to go a little bit lighter on this side so it stands out a bit more. Like that. And I'm going to go a bit lighter with my um, orange. down here. It's not quite, that's way too light. It's not quite the right orange. So I'm going to redraw my shape again using the orange. I'm going to take some of this pale cream again and neaten this up a little bit going over the top of it trying to get 
a sharp line like that and down the other side I'm going to reshape the top because I'm not happy with it like that Oops, sorry, shake the camera. <laughs> so there is a very dark blue within this um, shape. So I'm going to mix. I need a bit more. There, camera shake. There is a dark blue over here, which I'm going to put in bit more dirty than pure ultramarine so I'm putting a little bit of red in and a spot of the deep green a little touch of water and I'm just going to paint in this shape as I see it and also the same sh shape of colour goes up here as well like that And there is another shape of the same colour that goes within here. That was a little mistake dragging the white, but I actually think that looks good, so I'm going to leave that. Just want to have a little bit more blue here. Like that, and maybe around here. Now... I can see the base reflected and I'm going to put a little dark line there and also maybe a little bit of a darker line down the side at the bottom here so it stands out and putting some dark just there and there so all in all, I'm just looking for shapes that I can see. While I've still got this cream colour, I'm going to put in the base a little bit and also the knob on the top. So it's quite dark within there. I think I need to make it a bit darker and a bit more brown. So I'll take yellow ochre and a little bit of red, slightly brown it up a little bit. Put that in. It's darker under here. And then I'm going to take the pale version of this and paint the base. I think it's slightly more yellow. So I'll take oops, a little bit of the yellow up there. Didn't intend to drag the red in. And also here. And now this is where I draw a little bit. So I want to make sure I get a really sharp line across the top of these colours. And looking at where my base is, it's going off a little bit to the right, so I might have to chop that. So I'll probably finish it about there. Now the colour that's behind it is red, so I'm just going to put a little bit of red in there so that I can just draw the base in a bit more. And I will use the yellow that I have to correct the base on the other side. Like that. Base 
comes up a little bit like that and on that side also then I want the dark colour again just to correct there and then you have the reflection of the base within the body of the object so there's a curve dark line that goes up like that and then the paler area Happy with that, I'm going to paint in a little bit of yellow behind it. So, so it stands out a bit more and I need to re-emphasize the dark edge down here and redraw a little bit. going to take some of this yellow and just redraw the shape here that's a bit better like that now this over here is a little bit confused I'm going to take some of my orange and just Draw in the shape of the base again. There's a lot of paint on this, so I'm thinking I might leave that for now. And there's a shine on there. Now, I usually put my shines on at the end, but it's too tempting. I'm going to put another layer over here to make this more solid and now I'm going to start using my linseed oil because I'm starting to work layers on top and I want the paint to glide a little bit more. So I have my linseed oil in a pot and I'm just dipping in my brush and adding it to this mix. And going over this area and it's much softer because of the oil I see a, a bit of a light going down there and also I want to make this a bit sharper There are little areas of light along here, small shapes, and I think this dark area of blue should come a bit lower. I'm going to mix a bit of a pale orange. So I'm going to take what's on my palette and I want some white and a bit more red. And I'm going to again draw around this area here. I think possibly this is um, coming in a little bit too sharply, but I will see how it goes. I'm going to take some of that orange and put a bit in there as well to lighten it a little bit. I'm going to use some of this and just neaten up this area here. I think I'll leave that though actually because I think I'm going to be making a mess. I need to let the layer dry a little bit. I'm going to take some paint here and just put in a shape there. I need to 
correct it a little bit so I'm mixing a bit of a dark blue take a little bit of linseed oil and just put in another layer on there like that water-based oils this, these are already starting to get tacky so they do dry very quickly I have a brownish shape which is actually the tapestry on the wall that goes up here I'll put that in a bit more paint needs to be a bit darker and then there's the dark shape of my easel which is across the room down here like that and then I can actually see the window and see myself so I'll put me in as a vague shape what a very distorted head there and the window shape is um, I'll go in with a bit of a blue into this color here the window comes down there like that so I'm starting to work with more detail now And I can see I'm going to go in with a very pale colour and see the light coming through.
This is day two and I've allowed the paint to cure a little bit so I can paint over areas. I'm going to concentrate today on refining a little bit, adding detail, lightening and darkening tonal values. I'll start with adding a few highlights, so I'm going into some white. I don't usually use white in a very pure way, but for this I think we need the bright white of the great outdoors coming into my studio. So where the light is coming from the window, I'm just going to make it very bright. It's a little color, a little bit there and going down there. And the wonderful thing about water-based oils is that all my paints are still wet, so I can just dip into my palette without having to mix any more. I just added um, more white and more yellow before I started. I can see lots of details that I couldn't see yesterday. I don't want to go into too much detail because I want to capture the feel of it rather than um, a photographic image. So I'm just tweaking and playing with it. I need to make um, this bit here a lot lighter, I think, in some areas. So I'm going to take my white and my yellow. A bit more white. And go over this area here. To get a little bit more drama, I'm going to mix uh, orange. And go over this. And because I'm putting on a second layer, that's not quite light enough. I'll add a spot of white and a bit more yellow. Because I'm going over paint that's dried a little bit, I can get it thicker and I can get it more vibrant in colour. Take that up to there. And the red, I'm going to make it brighter. So I'm going to add a little bit of white into it. And there's quite a difference going on there between that and the dark shadows. And likewise with the pink, I can just take some white and put a little bit of cadmium red deep in it. That's quite light. That's too light. Take a bit more cad red deep. I keep picking up the vermilion actually, but it doesn't hurt to have a warmer pink. I'm going to put a little bit into my object because this is too dark. And some more of that red over here. That might be a little bit too orange, so I'll take some vermilion, just go over it. That's better. What I like about water-based oils compared with acrylic is the fact that you can manip manipulate it for quite a long time and coming back to my palette it's still wet. However, you get a solidity of colour that you don't get with acrylics. Um, acrylics I have always had to layer about probably about five or six layers to get the intensity intensity of colour that I get through two layers of the water-based oils. I'm going to brighten this orange. So I'm going to take some of that cadmium yellow light and a little bit of the viridian, um, vermilion. A bit more. I'm going to add a little bit of white just to lighten it slightly. That's a bit too red. and go over this again and you can see how bright that colour is with the second layer compared to the first layer. Go around the pattern and maybe put a little bit in there like that.
and then you've got a bit of a darker orange around here I think also the turquoise area should be a bit brighter as well so if I go up into here and add a little bit of white maybe a bit more actually that's quite a nice colour so I'll go over this and a little bit over there as well I'm also going to take some yellow and um, go over this area because that turned a bit green and the other little half circle was a little bit more orange I can also add a little bit of that yellow into my object and a bit down here take some of that blue and put that in as well at this point when I'm doing reflective objects I just add a few vague shapes that uh, symbolize what's there uh, to get the metallic feel I'm going to put in a little bit here that is the bottom half of the tapestry and that's very thick um, the paint that's underneath this so it's sliding around a little bit is it my windows are much brighter I'm going to add more of a neat white and put a little bit of a pale green next to it like that now I'm going to start putting in some fine lines for instance there's a shadow line under the bottom of the base there's the line where the top at, um, meets with the bottom and there's also a nice shine on there I can see lots of little um, marks that I'm going to make so up here there is a, a grid in the wall and I'll put that in further down a mark there when you're doing a reflective object like this you want all the lines that you put on to echo the shape of the sides of the object so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some more linseed oil I'm going to start using my rigger which is full of dried paint unfortunately let's loosen it up a bit and going into my um, linseed oil I'm going to do quite a dark line so I'm going to take the dark green that I've got here and the ultramarine so the dark green if you remember was hooker's green deep and a little bit of the cadmium red deep so that's quite a dark color I'm going to add a bit more linseed oil to make it run a bit more and with my really rather bent rigger I'm going to take a line across I'll have to go over the top of this to do it properly that's a little bit too runny it's gone a little bit transparent And I'm going to reshape this edge here so it drops down a little bit more like that there's also a little dark line that runs up there that's a little bit too far in I didn't intend to do it there I'll um, take some of the pale color and just push that over to the side a bit Under the base I'm going to put a dark line, not as dark as the one I've got and I might make it a deep, a bit more of a deep red in there 
This is just so that you get a nice clarity between the bottom and the surface it's sitting on. So just run that along there. Take a little bit more. And that's quite dark on the yellow. So I might take a little bit of a orange, an orange, and just blend that slightly. And I'm going to take some pale orange up here into that shadow. Like that. Going over the other side, continue that line of shadow along that. Now what I've done is I've just chopped the bottom of the base a little bit. So I'm going to take some of the pale colour and just run that along over that shadow line. made a mark on my pink take that off and also there is a very dark line under here where the chrome meets the base the disadvantage to using water-based oils is that if you make a mistake you just can't really take it off without spoiling the painting that you've done underneath. I'll just correct that a little bit. That's better. I'm going to do a little bit of lightning in areas. So it's a little bit lighter down here and I still want this line in the middle to be a bit darker than what I've got. I'm going to go into the darker colour and drag, drag it along, try and get a point on my rigger. a bit better. I think I need to add a few little highlights above that line. To make it a bit thinner because I made it a bit fat. And I'm just going to need not the reflection of the base here. Now going to the knob on the top, that's only half formed, so I'm going to take some white and maybe a little bit of the yellow and a bit of this colour that was underneath, this had yellow ochre in it. It was a sort of a grey, I'll use a bit of linseed oil. And I'll just try and get this in with a little bit more detail and a better shape. There's a slight ridge on it. That's better. And there's a shine as well. I can exaggerate the shine a little bit if I want to. Makes it more three-dimensional. Like that. Now I'm feeling that there's a little bit of a lack of colour up here. So I'm going to add some orange that I can see in there. It's not actually from the fabric. It's, I'm not sure, it's a bit of lighting. More orange there and maybe there. 
with a little bit long here and there's a few little shapes I can see within here I'm going to just refine that line down there a bit and bring the yellow across slightly to get the curve and to bring this forward a little bit I'm going to use some of this yellow and the white and to just cover up that area there that might be a bit too light I'll add a little bit of yellow into that so that it doesn't come forward too much that's it there's a few little bits of black pattern going on in this so I'll just add those I'll just go into my dark color I don't want it black so I'll just put in a dark color and also here and a little bit of red to finish off that area just here when I'm painting uh, anything I use all different types of brush strokes and I use all different angles because it adds a bit of variety into your brushwork so now what I'm going to do is bring this area out a little bit and it's a green that I need I think I'm trying not to put my hands on this because it's still wet so I'll just put my little finger over here and bring that green up there and then I'm going to put a little bit of blue above that green up here I'm going to add a little highlight down the left hand side of the lid. I need to have a clean brush for that though. And then I'm just going to add some highlights and then I think that will be done. So a very thin highlight down there. Add a little bit of the blue colour. And then I'm going to use neat white. I'm at the higher end of the tonal value, um, the scale, because my darks aren't that dark. So I'm going towards the higher, um, lighter levels. If I was going to make this very, very dark, then I wouldn't use a pure white because the contrast is a bit too stark and severe. So I'm going to have a highlight there. There is a highlight here. A little bit of a shine there. A bit more over the window. And going down here, I can see there's a highlight down there as well. Maybe I will add a little bit of a pale yellow just here and that will make it look more three-dimensional. 
however I've messed around with my edge a bit so I'll just take a bit of dark red and go over the line this is because my rigger is very old a little bit more highlight on the other side just here and going down there like that I'm going to put a shine on the base I did put a shine on yesterday but it was very thin I think what I might do actually is um, paint a bit more colour on the base to make it a bit thicker. I've got a little correction to make there where I made a little error. So I will just redraw that with blue and then taking this same colour again, just redraw like that. And then I want some white, just going to drag that along to make shine. my pink is a, still a little bit too dark I'm going to put some white into the cadmium red and go a little bit lighter in there and a little bit lighter into the purple as well and the blue And thinking of shines on the object, I'm going to add a few to make it appear more metallic. Not too happy with the left hand side, so I'm just going to use a bit of a bigger brush than the rigger to get a better shape with something slightly darker. So this is a bit of a grey. Bring that side out a little bit. And then go over with some dark just there. Might take that up aside a bit as well. And I think that will probably do. Just one little addition, which is going over that. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time.